uh, by the time we got to Brisbane, I was a rabid, drunken, smelly mess of rock and roll anger. And uh, coming out on stage and just telling me to get fucked and doing a show. And I think I kind of got through it that way. I was a fluke. I was never meant to be in the band at all. They never intended that song to be a single. That was just going to be a little album filler. It was actually Parisi who heard the few songs they had recorded and decided, no, this is the single and this is the vocal we want. Yeah, we got complaints. I got letters. Uh, Motherfucking and I was on the first EP. Yes, we got heaps of letters. When I first did a strip routine with Machine Gun Fellatio, and it was at the first gig actually, I had a nun's outfit on at the Hope Town Hotel. And I think it was also a Sunday afternoon show. It sort of looked a bit dinky and doing a strip show in this, I kind of liked the whole absurdity of the situation. But once again, it was to uh, entertain the guys in the band and make them kind of, you know, get them on their toes rather than for the audience. Misconception mainly about the whole thing was that we were sexist, you know, people, because they thought they heard this girl was getting topless in the show, they immediately knew the band name, they thought, oh, it's this whole cage girl, it's like this whole, you know, this misogynist sort of image, where it really, it was just a surrealist a yeah, angle, and she's singing a song called Motherfucker on a Motorcycle, it's got lines like, um, a hard hallucinator with an axe to grind, shooting from the hip like a porcupine, and she's got big horn rim moustaches on her nipples, I mean, it's, it's too weird to be anything else, you know, that's just weird, that's what it's about, and that's what we're about. And that, that set a, a level, you know, suddenly before I knew it, I'm out there strapping a Winnie the Pooh bear to my cock. The audience seemed to like it, so it became a part of, regular part of the show. And then when we did this show at uh, University in Melbourne, um, it did cause all this controversy. And we... I was tempting them to sack us from this show. They want us to walk away from the show. I said, no, if you don't want us to do our show, then you have to cancel us because you booked us knowing what our show is so you're going to have to say no and you're going to have to cancel us and once that was done they'd officially banned us the rest of our shows at other universities got cancelled banned because of it uh, and ended up getting this enormous amount of publicity everyone wanted to talk about was the issue of the day so we had to fit it all into a time and it was great because our schedule was cleared for the week because we didn't have any shows on like we had one and a half hours on just things like Triple J, talk back. It's interesting because at the time I was almost sick of doing the topless thing because I was thinking this is getting a bit predictable now. People are turning up specifically for the tit show, which I thought this is not what the band is about. I mean, it was a funny little, you know, spontaneous thing that's now become this thing with people lining up to see. So just when I was going to get rid of ditch the um, topless thing. Went national, yeah. We went to, uh, we were in Perth six weeks later and more front page news and we did a uni show and Marimba was the biggest crowd that they had ever had in the auditorium and then we went and played down in Margaret River to all these kids it was just everywhere we went we'll get in press and then got another two loops of the whole country and we ended up it was nine months we were solidly out on the road for we're not talking one show a week we're talking three and four shows a week just constantly touring then the following year when we had got invited back to the university i thought well what do i do now they're really going to expect a topless show um even though it's a year later i'm well over it so i gave them a topless and a bottomless show at the university to the muppet show soundtrack it was great because by that stage we had a show that was worth watching and from then we've just had no problems really <laughs> So we've actually got a gold record to give to Melbourne Uni, which we have to deliver when we're down there. In fact, it'll be platinum by the time we go there, but we'll give them a gold record because, you know, without them, where would we be? First real major project that we worked on uh, was a porno film, though, and it's where the Machine Gun Flash show pretty much started from. Oh, that's, really? Yeah, well, you know, Love Shark worked with us and Vrag, but uh, we started to get him involved with uh, porno movies as well. We are working on the, the porno soundtracks. And, uh, yeah, yeah, sort of the musical beast started to develop then. What is it that gives a pop record that special something, that extra touch that makes it a hit and lifts it to the dizzy heights of the top of the top ten? I don't think we write like other bands, but yeah, I mean, we certainly don't write in that I don't method, know. You know. Maybe. I 
Yeah. Every band changes as they play it live anyway. You, you just know. don't have the time to... I mean, no band has that much time. Maybe they do. We, we, spent, we spent six weeks on this song called Butter My Ass With A Pigeon just doing groove after groove and cutting up fucking typewriter tapes. Yeah, people right. discussing typewriting to make butter my be you but and like just to imagine. Yeah, and, and we didn't have we didn't have cut and paste and we got computers conga, we were putting we got, samples in a bloody sample. We got thing. conga players in laying all this stuff and Love Shark turns up one day to, to 3K's house and said, Oh, it should be a fucking country song. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he just goes, as the monster trucks me and played it like took him like what, two hours? Oh no, we 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 just racked up a lot of games, put it put in a um, set up the mic in the toilet and uh, away you went we did one take and that's what went on the album motherfucker again I don't know why these all stories start with us taking drugs but we turned up and we had we had the, the song that became Under Fresh Disciples was the groove and we had these lyrics for motherfucker and 3K had done the groove to Under Fresh Disciples and just kept saying it was do this song. Do yeah, this yeah. song. Yeah, it was like some lyrics over it. Yeah, I wanted something like a, a sabotage. Yeah, it was and he was had I don't know about like on a motorcycle. Which I've been singing. I actually had the bass line from I Was Made For Loving You, Kiss, originally. <laughs> I was singing it on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a motherfucker on a motorcycle. Oh, right. And you've been crapping on all week about, um, I like to get drunk, I like to get high, I love when the cars go off. <laughs> That's right. And he kept on going, you shut we up. It's going to be another song. It's going to be, be, it's be, be, it's be another song. It was like, oh, well, we need it somewhere else to go. So we put that in there. And you think, all right, we've got it. We've got the groove, we've got the song. And so we invited, we thought we'll go with the, because we'll, at that stage we weren't really a band playing live. We we're just grabbing people anyway. Right. So we... we and they had a friend of mine, Mandy Pierce, and they were very keen for her. She's a wonderful singer, drummer and tap dancer, and I think she's a bit of an Australian treasure. So I called Mandy and I said, look, do you mind doing this? It means you are going to have to be in a very tight space, uh, 3K's little uh, studio slash bedsit slash bachelor pad in King's Cross. <laughs> so we said, let's get Krista in, she can do backups on this song, you know, it won't take long, we'll mock it over. And anyway, Krista being Krista, she doesn't turn up for two hours, in the meantime, we've taken a whole bag of mushrooms. And By the time I got to the flat, I could smell that Mandy Pearson was in the house. The marijuana fumes were, you could get them on the street door, and he's two floors up. Yeah. I'd been playing the turntable the night before, and just touching the edge of it, going, wah, wah, with this song, so I've got this loop, and... In another corner was Chit Chat Von Loop and stuff, I think was very self-conscious of being so out of it and his way of appearing straight is to talk a million miles an hour and act really normal. I got stoned and, and so much so that I went back to my own circumcision. <laughs> in another corner was Miss Mandy Pearson slowly smoking an enormous reefer and looking a bit like who the hell are these people and what's going on. And God bless 3K short, he was behind his mixing desk smoking his cigar and Hawaiian shirt. And Krista just went, oh fuck all this and grabbed the mic and just went, what's these lyrics and just bang and then it, there it was. I really think the turning point was where you and I were going away for the weekend Surreal. to write some songs down at Friedman's house. Yeah. And just as we we're leaving, you are out and said, I've got this bass line, I've got to get this bass line, it's really cool. Why don't you take this with you, you might get some words for it. That's right. Anyway, I went away and I couldn't get, you You were obsessed by some girl, I forget what it was, and you kept on crapping on, and so we wrote this song, it seemed to fit this bass line, that worked with it, it finally got you focused on something. It's supposed to be a weekend of doing music, but we had this incredible acid, and Chit Chat said, try one of these, and it was Buddha's, and there was a, a, whole, a whole Buddha, was spread over four tabs of acid, and I. No, so it's really strong. Just take, just a, take a, half, a half. So I thought I'll do a half. So I took two, and about ten minutes later, was really in a mood to do something. And I've been listening to Parliament solidly, and I said, so for some reason, started saying, "Well, we should write songs about you know the band members." And I started saying, "You know, what about Round Robin Sisters, Shake and Sway, to the B Craft style?" And you're going, "That's my favorite Parliament." And I'm going, "Round Robin." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty 